meeting back on the rails. Yes, George. Right. Thank you, Alex. Now, the, uh, the Rushdie film story. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think they should ban it. I mean, I don't believe that a film can incite people to want to commit murder. Did you see Absolute Beginners? <laughs> the bit we keep running appears to show Rushdie being attacked by four flying footstools. No, no. <laughs> Henry, they're the books of the Quran. Oh! <laughs> oh, I see. But how about a follow-up piece on the reshuffle? Yeah, what about a profile of Angela Rumbold and how Thatcher wants her to concentrate on important women's issues? Well, we could do a piece on Moynihan, the new minuscule for energy. <laughs> Did he move downwards or sideways? Or did he get lost down the back of the sofa? <laughs> Why didn't Edwina Curry get back in then? I mean, God knows she did enough crawling. Uh, she made a bit of a gaffe last week, called Mrs Thatcher a demagogue. Yeah, I think she meant to say demigod. Yeah. And she also said that Japanese condoms were too small for British pricks. <laughs> You should know she's surrounded by British pricks every day. <laughs> right, now, look, is there anything else breaking today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is yet another briefing to cover from the Labour Party. They'll be droning on about their new financial policies, you know? Fair rates, even fairer income tax, unbelievably nice VAT, that sort of thing. <laughs> Listen, now, look, I will have a quick uh, post-mortem on yesterday's bulletin. Damien. Your item on mad cow disease. Yeah, look, it was not my fault that the pictures were so dull, George. I mean, every cow in that herd had BSE. But could we get one of them to stagger about in a wobbly kind of way? <laughs> <laughs> they just lay there idle, doing bugger all, and looking totally sane. Even after we lobbed in the firecrackers. <laughs> what do you mean, firecrackers? Well, you know, to get them up. And... No, 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 I don't want to know that. Now, why do we cut this interview with Gummer so short? Because no viewer can stand the irritating little prat for more than ten seconds. Exaggerating is not that bad. Oh, yeah. There's a lot that we've got to look at, and of course we'll try to take from them any useful points that they have raised. No, you're right. Point taken. <laughs> I tried to get him to feed a beef burger to his daughter again. <laughs> that poor kid. And so Gummer never becomes Minister for Energy, he'll probably force feed her a chunk of plutonium. <laughs> Look, can we get a move on? Yes, all right, Alex. Is anyone you. having any trouble with the computer? I seem to be losing data off my terminal. Oh, God, that's all we need. Oh, yeah, it's just wiping stuff. You can't rely on these computer gadgets. Basically, they're just typewriters with ideas above their station. <laughs> any, new system, any new system is bound to develop a few little gremlins, Henry. You certainly look like little gremlins, Gus. All like bloody great trolls. Well, I've never got used to doing everything off these computers. George, George, in this fast-changing world of ours, you have to have tomorrow's technology today. Because today is tomorrow's yesterday. And yesterday is a bad place to live. What is he saying? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you have to do something about these computers, Gus. Hello, I think he's just taken all the company accounts and hidden them in the limbo file. That's an interesting question, isn't it? Can something that's cold and robotic have a sense of humour? What the hell is going on? No, probably not. <laughs> I have just punched up the draft of your biography I'm working on, and words just started dropping off the screen. Bloody hell, it's developed taste now. This is spooky. <laughs> it's very irritating. If I don't deliver to the publishers by August, it won't be on the shelves in time for the Christmas rush. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Oh, that's a nation noise. Oh, well, don't worry, Sally. If it's late, I expect they'll just delay Christmas for you. Isn't there anybody on the staff who understands computers? Well, it used to be that you sacked them all, remember? Gus, just before it went down, did you by any chance happen to put in a floppy? <laughs> well, as it happens, I did, yes. Came to the post. It was called Dynamic Management Made Easy. I thought so. You've given us a virus. What? A computer virus. You see, it's slowly wiping data. Well, will it just, just wipe everything, then? Well, it depends on what kind of virus it is. It'll probably just hide lots of info until we pay the blackmailers and they give us the code word that'll get it all back. Oh, God, this is going to create chaos. I mean, we need this computer. Unadulterated bollocks, George. <laughs> the human brain is all we need. You lot have become dependent on these things. When I was starting out, we never needed computers to record information. That's right. You used to carve it into the bare rocks with flints and still be finished in time to catch a mammoth for your tea, didn't you? <laughs> you may sneer acid drop, but I've never needed computers. I keep everything in my head. Yes, well, realistically, Henry, we can't keep everything in our heads. Just keep everything in Sally's head. Plenty of storage space. Could probably sublet. 
Very strong. What a witty little non-entity you are, Dick. Please, I'm getting my migraine. Hold on, hold on. I think I've got the ultimatum. Yep, we've got to transfer £50,000 into that number Panamanian bank account. Well, I mean, you've got to hand it to them. Whoever's done this is a genius. Well, they had you well sussed, didn't they, Gus? I mean, whoever did this knew you were daft enough and vain enough to play that floppy the moment you got it. Well, that narrows the field down to a few thousand suspects. Now, it's a very specific virus. It's obviously devised by someone who understands computers and knows our system inside out. Oh, what well, like those computer operators you fired, Gus? Well, that was a big financial saving, wasn't it? I think we're entering into the area of idle speculation here, Alex. I think perhaps that you and George should interface with me on this in George's office. If I've lost that first chapter of my biography... Oh, don't I'm... be ridiculous. There's far more important stuff on that computer than your stupid autobiography. Office sweepstake on all be the new Archbishop of Canterbury's on there. Can everyone remember who they had? Who had Bath and Wells? Henry, what did you have? Cliff Bloody Richard. <laughs> Cliff Richard. Well, there weren't enough bishops to go round, were there? <laughs> Damien, you know this area. Is Iraq really going to start a war? Well, you've got to understand Hussein's position. I mean, first of all, he urgently needs higher oil revenues to pay off his massive debts. Second, the Kuwaiti Islands are of vital strategic importance to him so he can protect the Sharm el Sheikh waterway. And then, of course, there's the single most important political factor. What's that? He's a nutter. <laughs> well, basically, this is an unacceptable scenario. Once we start letting criminals call our plays, then democracy is in a no-win situational zone. We must remember, there's a hidden agenda here. What is this hidden agenda? He doesn't know. It's hidden. <laughs> the hidden agenda is that these people want to subvert the rule of law. Oh, so it isn't a hidden agenda. It's visible. The bottom line is, whoever's responsible for this virus, we have to call their bluff. But it's all very well for you to take a stand, Gus, but you're not the one who's going to have to cope with all the chaos. I am. We are. Yes, we are. We can't give in to criminals, George. I know a strong, iron-willed man like you will understand that. Well, yes, but... Uh... To even negotiate would be a surrender. I'll notify the police. I'm just worried about the chaos it's going to cause, the effect it's going to have on staff morale, Gus. You have a fine team, Coach. I'm sure everyone will respond magnificently. Trouble, George. Computer has started printing up people's salaries, and Henry and Sally have just clocked how much the other one earns. <laughs> <laughs> I want to die. George, I demand an explanation. So do I. The differential between our salaries is extraordinary. I agree. Little Miss Mediocrity here earns nearly as much as I do. Rubbish. The gap's huge and in the wrong direction. <laughs> After all, it's not Henry who's attracting demographic groups A, B and C, 1 and 2. Oh. For God's sake, both of you, just stop badgering George, will you? Thanks, Alex. You know perfectly well it's Gus who controls the purse strings. It's the organ grind you want to talk to, not the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Good point. Now, guys, about this money. No, hold on, Henry. This is far too important to do anything hasty. Let's not burn our boats before the bridge is built. <laughs> what? <laughs> the point is, as the ratings puller, I... Look, I hate to interrupt this ego-thon, but we do have a news broadcast to get out. So. I agree. Now, we can discuss this later. Very well, but you haven't heard the last of this! Quite. Expect a call from my agent. Can't we just pay these blackmailers and get rid of the virus, Gus? We well, can see the trouble it's causing already. <laughs> I mean, God knows what's in store. We have to be firm, George. In a situation like this, we must emulate the Prime Minister. Well, cock it up and then blame someone else. <laughs> <laughs> we must never give in to terrorists. That's what she says. It's also what Sir Royston says. And as our major shareholder, I think his views should be plugged into our matrix, don't you? I spot a hidden agenda. He wants to look good to Sir Royston. I just want us to do what is right. Sometimes you have to stand by a principle, no matter what the cost. Sometimes you have to stand by a principle? That's never Gus. I reckon alien beings have taken possession of his body. <laughs> Bloody computer virus. But you know what's going to happen now all the salaries are out in the open, don't you? Everyone's going to go around being bitter, small-minded, envious. It's pathetic. It's 
right, of course. Yes, I suppose so. Mind you, it's easy for him to say. You should see the whack that bastard's on. <laughs> Muzzle, George. It's all right. What I'm saying is, with all these backbench Tories on the rampage about bias, let's just be careful, shall we? I know we? how they'd like the news to sound. Bong, nation begs Mrs. Thatcher, please let us pay more poll tax. <laughs> Bong, Mrs. Thatcher visits disaster scene and raises dead. <laughs> Bong, England wins test match, Kenneth Baker takes eight for 41. <laughs> What I find laughable about all these Tories is they imagine news editors are radical subversives who are a threat to society. You're right. It's laughable. <laughs> now, what are we going to do about this Scargill story? Has anybody got anything ready, just in case he goes and resigns? Well, I don't think he'll have to resign now, George, not unless he does something stupid. Get a resignation piece ready. <laughs> now, nobody's had an interview with Ridley since he went. Any joy on that front? Well, I'll try him again, George, but I just keep getting his answer phone. It's a sad day, isn't it, when insulting Germans is considered a resigning offence? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the answer phone again. <laughs> Gordon Tark, Mr. Ridley! <laughs> Basically, Gus, I want the same money as Henry, or I shall leave and I shall take your A, B, and C's one and two with me. Now, I gave in over the size of my photograph in the lobby, but I'm digging my heels in over this one. You're undervaluing me. Oh, Sally, Sally, believe me, no one values you more than I do. I regard you as the jewel in our crown. Really? Really. And you're right. There does seem to be some sort of anomaly, which means that Henry's on a higher basic than you. I believe the difference is somewhere in the region of... 7,840 pounds. <coughs> Thanks. That well, saves me looking it up. Yes, well, I think we can commit to increasing your money by 7,840 pounds. And I would be on exactly the same money as Henry? Yes. <laughs> Though I'd appreciate it if our arrangement was kept confidential. Only if Henry were to find out. Well, you know how terribly childish you can be about these things, then. So, is this arrangement... Acceptable? For the time being, Gus, yes. Of course, objectively, I should get more money than Henry, but I suppose once again I'm to be penalized for my reasonableness. Sally, I've always said it. When it comes to reasonableness, you're in a class of your own. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, is there anything else breaking? Yeah, there's more reaction to the royal pay rises. Government says it wants to ease the burden on the taxpayer. Answer's obvious, really. You make her the Queen PLC and you flog her to Lord Hanson. <laughs> I think I've got a piece on some new very large corn circles. You know, uh, what causes them? Is it some intelligent alien life force? They can't be that intelligent if they just spend all their time drawing circles. Maybe they're huge, retarded Martians who enjoy playing noughts and crosses. <laughs> How's the virus doing? Well, it's still rampant. It started mangling up the scripts in the obituary section. You see, it's got Thatcher's old bit mixed up with the one for Alice Cooper. As Prime Minister, Mrs. Thatcher soon began to develop a distinctive style which included biting the heads off live chickens. <laughs> At least I think it's mixed up. My migraine's developed a migraine now. Hold on, what's it up to now? It's not making any sense at all. It's just a load of drivel. Sally, we found your book. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on, what's it throwing up now? Seems to have accessed into some sort of confidential record. Hey, there's a section on you, George. Oh, yeah. It's full of personal information. Well, this is outrageous. And half of it's wrong, see? Born May 3rd, 1947, that's wrong. Studied English at Manchester Poly, that's wrong. Chronic hypochondriac? That's wrong. This is outrageous. There's a list of all my friends and their political affiliations. See if I'm in there. Alex hates. Oh, yes. 
including your political activities as a student. Well, that's not right. Again, you see, loads of mistakes. And they got your job description wrong. Oh, and conviction for car theft, May 1973. I mean, honestly, what a mistake to have on your file. <laughs> it is a mistake. Well, not entirely. Well, I was mad about this boy who worked the local dodgems, you see, and uh, took me for a spot of adolescent joyriding in a borrowed Daimler. Oh, I see. Oh, come on, George. I was only 16. Well, you must have done some silly, impetuous things when you were a teenager. No, you didn't, did you? What's it got on you, Damien? Well, let's see. Damien Day. See psychiatrist's report. <laughs> <laughs> and on yours truly. Oh, a list of organisations with which I am credit blacklisted. This should make interesting okay. reading. So who's compiled all these files then? Personnel department? No, these are someone's secret files. You see, there's a code name. Omega. Yes, but who would want all this personal information on us? I don't know. Someone who wants to know everything, I suppose, so that he can control people, manipulate them. <clears throat> How on earth would Gus have got hold of all this kind of information? Well, you can employ agencies who'll acquire it from police computers, medical records, that sort of thing. Well, I did a special feature on them for my Is Our Privacy Being Invaded piece. You know, the one where I confronted that surveillance consultant. In his bedroom. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> It's finished. 21 pages of people who think I'm a credit risk. 21 pages? That's horrendous. Yeah, it's not up to date, actually. I missed a few out. <laughs> Do you know there's a principle at stake here? We can't tolerate Gus spying on us like this. All right, so they're Gus's files. What are we going to do about it? The way I see it, we've got two options. Well, either we can draw up a list of our grievances and make a formal complaint through the proper channels, or we can lynch him. I think we should lynch him. <clears throat> I've been a newscaster for nearly 20 years, for God's sake, and I was a foreign correspondent long before little Sally Smug was even conceived in her test tube of pot and down. <laughs> <laughs> Are you listening to me? Absolutely, Henry, absolutely. I'm warning you, Gus, if the differential in pay between Sally and me is widened, I shall resign in a blaze of lurid tabloid exclusives. Henry, Henry, please believe me, I regard you as the jewel in our crown. And I'll admit, there has been an anomaly. So I think we can viably commit to doubling the differential between you. So that's an increase of what? £7,840. Oh, and it might be better for office morale if this were kept from Sally. Only you know how terribly childish she is, Henry. I'm would. sorry, Henry, but this is important. Gus, it has come to our attention that you have paid some agency to dig up lots of highly personal information about us to put on your own secret computer filing system. I know. Disgraceful, isn't it? Sorry? They completely overstepped their brief. Excessive zeal, I'm afraid. I just asked them to do a few basic security clearances. You know, for if the PM's coming and special branch want to be reassured there are no assassins lurking here, that sort of thing. But I'm afraid these chappies went into mega snoop. And when I saw how much they'd invaded everyone's privacy to get hold of this stuff, well, I was as shocked as you are. <laughs> Sorry, my bullshit alarm just went off. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I was appalled. I've been meaning to wipe them myself, actually. My bullshit alarm just overloaded. The fact remains, Gus, that you compiled secret files about virtually everybody in this office. Yes, indeed. And what do these files say about me? That in 1946, you were expelled from Winchester for urinating in the headmaster's sherry decanter. <laughs> that in 1965, you were obliged to leave Israel after making an obscene suggestion to Golda Meir. And that in 1966, you were arrested for disturbing the peace after they found you in Windsor Great Park, dressed as Marilyn Monroe and attempting to strangle a swan. <laughs> oh, well, fair enough. We want something done about these records. In fact, I think they should be destroyed. Brilliant idea, George. The perfect solution. I tell you what, why don't you wipe them personally? Here you are. There's the disc. And? The safety copy. Absolutely. Mustn't forget that, must we? Well... If that's that little misunderstanding straightened out, thank you all for coming to see me. Now, I know you news commandos have to get back to the front line, so off you go, squad. Oh, Henry. Joy, as always.
Gus Hedges' first rule of management. Always keep a safety copy of a safety copy. <laughs> Damien, can I borrow you for a second? Certainly. Oh, my God. It's just that you appear to be our resident expert on computers. Yes, amazing, isn't it, for a mental patient? Look, what exactly did it say about me in this psychiatrist report? That you were a model of sanity for the rest of us to be measured against. Now, Damien, I just wanted to ask you, how will this virus behave next? Well, God knows. At the moment, it's just grabbing material and displaying it at random. I see. So it could, uh, for the sake of argument, randomly display more confidential data of a sensitive nature? Oh, you mean, for the sake of argument, yeah. your secret strategy to drastically reduce staff levels? Uh, ah. Have the others seen it? Well, not yet, but they might soon. Damien, I've been meaning to talk to you about your salary. There's been some sort of anomaly. We'll interlock on this soon, eh? Sure. Damien, Damien. There's a farmer on the phone for you. He says, how big do you want the corn circles? Oh, great. <laughs> George! George, I just wanted to say one thing. I'm a listener. Hey. And because I'm a listener, I've realized you're 150% right. About what? This computer virus. We should pay up. Oh, I know it's easy for me to have the luxury of some high moral position, but it's you, the frontline troops, will be peppered with shrapnel. We have to live in the real world. I'll make arrangements for that money to be transferred into that Panamanian bank account. You mean surrender? Oh, there's Winston Churchill, in comes Winnie the Pooh. Well, I've come to realize that George's advice is tempered, as always, with insight and experience. Now, don't forget to wipe those tapes. All right, Henry. Oh, yes, Sally. Everything okay with you? Are you still bothered about your money? Not at all, Henry. I'm happy. You happy? Oh, yes, I'm very happy. Then we're both very happy, aren't we? What's going on? I think it's the Smugness Olympics. <laughs> Come on, let's wipe this stuff. These tapes are despicable. I find this kind of intrusion really abhorrent. Very tacky indeed. Absolutely. The sooner they're erased, the better. I never knew she was a lesbian, did you? <laughs> hey, look, John's got her piece. Yeah. So is Julie in accounts. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, Dave, who did win that Archbishop of Canterbury sweepstake? Jack, in lighting. Oh, uh, what? Jack, the, uh, the alcoholic who was arrested for fair dodging? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I must say I don't like the sound of this Bath and Wells chap. The papers say he's a cockney secondary modern boy who supports Arsenal. That's all we need. A pearly primate with come on you gunners emblazoned across his surplus who replaced the creed with four choruses of knees up mother brown. Can you imagine? Brown ale and jelly deals at communion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, War. Henry, I'm working. Uh, what on? This Valheim story. He's meeting the Czech and West German presidents. Marks his rehabilitation. Uh, is he giving a press conference after? Yeah. Mind you, it'll probably come out of the meeting saying it never